Hi everybody, delighted to be supporting the People in Training Conference again this year, albeit virtually, alongside the BAI and Propel. Thanks for having us. Uh, obviously, we'd love to be with you somewhere in central London today and, and talking to you on a stage, but instead I'm fan talking to you from, from home. Um, but today what we wanted to focus on was around the ways that we can evolve the way we support our teams and try and take some positives from the pandemic too. I think though with that in mind, it's important we keep that in context. This isn't me talking about, you know, lots of really positive things that we're really glad we've gone through. Clearly, we wish we hadn't gone through any of the challenges that we've gone through as a sector in the past nine months. But, you know, if we are going to take some positives and, and ways to help people, I think it's important that we do. I think the best way to frame it is maybe us looking at how we're building new habits, looking at new ways that we can engage with our teams and take on some of the learnings that we've taken over the past six or nine months based on the changes of operation and the things we've had to do situationally to build on those habits. I'm also going to use some CGA data to kind of contextualise these points in a little bit more detail and hopefully trying to bring some positivity to the future as well. We'll start with an overtly negative number, there's no way of looking at this positively, and that's the fact that we've seen a 40% decline in annual turnover over the past year. And no surprises as well that this has had a real impact in terms of confidence. So looking back to July 16, I remember thinking then around the confidence levels that, you know, how extremely low they are. If you look at where they are now in October, you can see the real impact that just before the second lockdown, uh, we really had as a sector. You know, perhaps this has increased a little bit. I'd be interested to see how this data has evolved. Um, but, you know, with the, the rumour and conjecture and challenges around the tiered system, you know, that have been rumoured uh, rumor this week, there's no guarantees that that will improve anytime soon. And realise as well that 2020 started quite strongly before lockdown. You know, even coming, you're coming up from uh, December 18, some, some decent growth. Um, and it's, we can see from February to September how things have started to fall away. Fall away so much to pack to, to 53.3 billion pounds worth of, of revenue lost across the sector. And that includes quick service restaurants, hotels, as well as pub bars and restaurants as well. So a huge, huge amount of revenue dropped out of the market. And it's clear to see as well the impact that's had on GDP from the stats uh, from ONS, but equally there's huge parts of the market that have yet to reopen too. So you can see here in pink uh, over the, the last few months how things uh, have gone in terms of sites that are known to trade versus those that aren't known to be trading. You can also see the impact that, that a lockdown has on the number of sites that aren't able to stay open for, for click and collect or for delivery. And the reality as well is that unfortunately and tragically, we're gonna see around 10,000 sites that will be unable to reopen uh, be it permanently or would have to change ownership if they are to reopen. That said, with all the challenges that we face and the, the relative straitjacket on the industry as well, like for like performance has held up relatively well, and I say relatively with a real emphasis. You know, I think we've seen the growth uh, of like for likes and around the eat out to help out scheme, but you know, realistically, we don't want to be going through um, any level of, uh, of like for like decline around a third down you know, irrespective of whether there's a reduction in, in capacity. And I think really that highlights the first and important um, habit that we need to build on, and that's that around keeping communication clear and keep to, to keep communicating. I think across our own clients, we've really seen a, you know, a real openness in sharing of information, partly out of necessity, but equally out of the, um, you know, the need for people to have access to information and to drive confidence in businesses wherever possible as well even when things have been particularly great at various points, you know, even before job retention scheme was announced, et cetera. I think now that there's that precedent for sharing information and being open with information, I think as much as it is challenging, particularly when it comes to talking about financial information, I think this is something that as a habit we really need to build on and start to look at ways to make sure that people have confidence in our businesses and have those channels to be able to, to raise questions openly as well. Looking on a locational basis and, and the impact that's had in terms of um, frequency in the market, you know, one in two city centre workers now work from home, typically eight or drink out, you know, significantly three or more times a week, with a further nearly 30% doing so once or twice a week. That's had a huge impact in terms of frequency on the market and a huge impact as well in terms of the share of sales by location. So you can see the move away from city centres into large towns, small towns, and you know, the, the lots of talk around the strength of suburban areas over the past few months as well, which is no surprise. 
and the reality is that a lot of people drank out, ate, ate and drank out less as well, which is clearly no surprise, but equally that is a huge reduction in, in visits uh, over that quarter. So just in one quarter of the year, we saw 88 million fewer visits. And I think when there is such an importance of people going out and you know, the importance of making the most of those visits, it's really important. The second, um, second habit is not to forget hospitality. I think over this period, we've done a fantastic job as an industry to keep experience positive. Um, and expectations around that are still high, even with the need to wear masks and distance and how people take payment differently, et cetera. I think the importance of making sure we make the most of all those commercial situations and make the most out of spend is absolutely crucial, especially as we come into the Christmas period as well, irrespective of how maybe we're able to trade over that period. Because people are still going out for experience, you know, three quarters of the population have visited from July to November. And they're equally going up more times locally as well. So 46% are more likely to visit um, where they live locally. And there's a real demand and desire to, to support local businesses. But maybe that's going to change how you trade effectively or the occasions that you're dealing with. Maybe as a, as a suburban business or a local business, you're less likely to have dealt with big Christmas events as you did previously. And the reality is that those are the top sales days. You know, these are the top sales days of 2019. And we've still got some of these days to come ahead. You know, as I mentioned before, there's a real challenge as to whether we may be able to trade effectively for all of these days, um, depending on what, what uh, restrictions we're going to be under. But the kind of overt nature of needing to be commercially focused um, as, as frontline teams is, is really, really important. I think something that we, we really need to keep that heightened uh, sensitivity to opportunity there as well. Because the reality as well is that 37 percent have already pre-booked their first visit. You know, people really want to get out there. There's that latent demand I talked about before that people want to, to fill into the market. And people want to feel comfortable eating and drinking out. These are the things they miss most. They miss spontaneity. They miss, miss feeling normal. And they miss all those things that when they gather around people, which, you know, clearly isn't going to reappear suddenly uh, even before Christmas. But I think people are more confident when they're eating and drinking out as well. So the impact of the Eat Out to Help Out scheme has seen that 56% of people are more confident. But equally, you can see the opportunities there when people are out, albeit while well subsidised, um, that they have spent as well. And that's driven like for like sales in a really positive way. And I think it's also caused its challenges on the team, though. We know that being able to trade in these short, sharp periods where there's you know lots of people coming out who are maybe go out less frequently and cause different challenges for teams that has had a real impact on teams but we have built resilience and i think that's the next habit we need to build on we really have to support our teams and make them aware of the um of how they've been resilient and the positives in that and equally the um focus on the individual too you know a real focus for the individual we started our hospitality professionals research earlier this year um, which is where we speak to team members our survey team members uh, throughout the year to get their views on hospitality, hospitality is a career and the challenges that they've been facing. And we've more recently worked with Bayman Hospitality as well, fantastic organisation um, around looking at diversity in the sector as well, and all with a focus on the individual. And I think one thing that's really come clear from this research is that there's a, you know, the feeling around being uh, supported, uh, particularly around well-being, has been really good. Three and five have felt well-being was prioritised by their employers. I think this is a really important change for the industry as, as you know the past couple of years has been more of a focus on well-being at least from what we've seen and you know the fact that this is now starting to come through in some of this data is, is really positive and it's positive as well that this has had an impact on how people see their employers you know 35 percent have improved their opinions of their own employers over this period which is again a really positive point based on how supportive we've been as an industry um, and you know i think the important thing now as the next habit to build on is to keep this focus on well-being core to operations. Speaking to one of my colleagues this week who has worked in hospitality for a, for a long time, I won't say how long, um, but they remember working in one of the big hotels um, and being told to put their game face on or put their mask on and as before they went into the dining room for their shift and to leave their problems behind them. This mentality is hopefully pretty much dead within hospitality, but any, any remnants of that really has to disappear. I think we really have to focus on making sure our teams are, you know, in the moment and being able to be their selves to be able to deliver effectively. And particularly when it comes to having um, the kind of focus to be commercially focused as well in terms of making the most out of every visit, that's really important that they get that support. 
and it's going to be important too for optimism. You know, we've seen optimism take a hit for, for people working in hospitality, uh, for even from July to October, you know, going from 43% to 18%. You know, it's a significant drop off uh, in people's confidence in the industry and something that all of the things we talk about are really needed for us to, to kind of fire on all cylinders. And we've also seen people's um, viewing employers drop in a little bit in terms of their confidence. So 71% uh, in July to 49% in October. Now, that is a significant drop, but we have to remember this is pre-job retention scheme as things got extended from the Chancellor as well. So there is a chance that this may be deemed a little bit more positive, dependent on how people are taking the current news around, or potential news around different tiering and the challenges around the changes to those. But I think it's really important that all of these new these habits that we kind of keep can't culminate in this, and that's not to forget career development. You know, we've seen some great strides in terms of the focus and opportunities within hospitality uh, and how those are shared you know recently and a lot of great work is done across lots of businesses and highlighting career paths but what really stuck out for us across lockdown was that 64 percent have actively looked for ways uh, for personal and professional development over the past nine months and i think this is a really amazing thing that we need to make sure that people still have access to lots of different uh, learning materials and have uh, the visibility to see what's ahead of them in their careers within businesses, you know, irrespective of the kind of pragmatic needs at the time within hospitality. And I think the other thing as well is that we have to make sure that we are not just preaching to the converted, we've got to preach to the unconverted. There's a lot of people in hospitality who are rightly extremely positive about hospitality and the career opportunities within it, but there's also a lot who aren't, and we have to look at as to why those people aren't seeing those opportunities and we have to try and unblock them. So how do we distill all these things down? What are the habits that we want to keep? Well, as I mentioned, we want we need want and need to keep communicating openly. We've seen now that the positives that come from communicating openly and actually now the expectation that we communicate more openly, we have to use this as a basis and kick out from as well. Hospitality drives experience. And as much as Danny Mayer said at the Peach 2020 conference last week that hygiene is a new hospitality, those two words beginning with H have to be inextricably linked together. You know whether we're delivering a positive hygiene experience, hospitality has to quickly follow because that drive experience, drive sales, and those sales can be more important than ever. And even if we are dealing with a secondary ease out to help out scheme and the challenges that that entails, hopefully we are at some point, but we have to reinforce resilience. We have to share with our teams success stories and share with them the consciousness of what they've been able to achieve so that they feel that kind of growth of resilience as well. Because that need for well-being doesn't stop. This is you know, situational well-being is one thing, but we have to support people on an ongoing basis as well. Just if work is difficult, doesn't mean that things at home aren't going to be and vice versa. We have to make sure that our teams are comfortable and able to develop and support their team members in, in a personal sense as well. And we have to make sure that people are empowered to see what those career development opportunities are as well and make sure they're central to our thinking, you know, like I say, we know that pragmatism is going to win out in the short term and that, you know, trading is one thing, but we also need to make sure that the skills gaps that will still be there next year, particularly post-Brexit, are covered by us being able to develop our own people. I hope you found some of that useful. Um, like I say, really sorry we can't be with you in person. We'll look forward to seeing you all again soon. 